anthropologists and archaeologists have long been trying to figure out what happened to these first people in the New World. The University of Wyoming's Associate Professor of Archaeology, Todd Surville, joined me earlier to explain what we know and what we don't know about the Clovis people. So Todd, your specialty is the first people of the New World. That's right. Um, I'm not talking about Christopher Columbus and the first Europeans, but the people who were here when Christopher Columbus arrived, uh, people who arrived from Asia roughly 14 to 15,000 years ago, uh, the Native Americans uh, that we know of today, their ancestors. Can you describe what their lives were like and what the world looked like to them? Yeah, um, when people first arrived on this continent, it was a very different place. The world was in the midst of an ice age. Um, we had massive, mile-thick glaciers or ice sheets covering much of the northern half of, of North America. Um, the area of Wyoming today would have been considerably colder and drier. It probably would have been a tundra or treeless. Um, we would have had mammoths, extinct um, elephants here. We would have had horses and camels and ground sloths, a huge array of extinct animals that don't live here anymore, even musk oxen uh, and caribou. Um, this was the environment uh, into which people first, first entered. These people were not farmers. They were hunting and gathering peoples, and they were highly nomadic. They were moving hundreds of kilometers every year. We know this because we can look at the types of stone uh, they make their tools out of, and we, can, we know where that stone occurs naturally, and we know how far uh, it has been moved. And we see people are moving a lot. They're highly nomadic. They're hunting and gathering and exploiting these large, now extinct um, prey species. Reading some popular um, material, I came across the whole exaggerated idea that, oh, these people suddenly appeared and then they disappeared. But that's not necessarily the truth, is it? Well, uh, no, it's not. They, they certainly suddenly appeared in the sense that 16,000 years ago there were no people on this continent. Uh, and they arrived, we're almost certain they arrived from Asia. Uh, in, in, and probably first came in into the northwestern part of Alaska. They came across the Bering Land Bridge, and from there their populations grew, and they spread out and migrated across the continent, both North and South America. Uh, so it, in a sense, it was a fairly sudden event, um, but in terms of their disappearance, uh, no, they, they never disappeared. In fact, um, we consider them to be ancestral of the modern peoples who live here today. The notion that they disappeared is based on the fact that about oh, 12,900 years ago, um, they changed the way that they made spear points, from what we call a Clovis point to what we call a Folsom point. These refer to places where these types of artifacts were first found. They're very similar in appearance, but it's a slightly different style. And when you see a change in artifact style, you can interpret this in various ways, such as the extinction of the people who made the, the prior type of artifact, but really probably what it just represents is changing fashion, changing style. People just changed the way they were doing things. One reason they may have done this is right at this time that they start, uh, that they change the way they make projectile points, we have a massive extinction event. All these large mammals that used to live here in Wyoming uh, suffered extinction. Something like 35 species of North American mammals suffered extinction right at this time period. What caused that? Well, it's a good question. Um, we've been debating this for over 100 years now. The primary culprits, the traditional things we debate about, are the humans caused it. These, these animals had been living in, in North America for hundreds of thousands of years prior to human arrival. Uh, humans show up and within a couple thousand years, they're gone. It's, so it's, there's tempting, it's tempting to see some kind of causal event there, right? Like humans did it. They got Guys got excited and, and killed as many as they could. Absolutely. We call this the overkill idea. People as predators, hunting too many animals, driving them to extinction. If you think about it, we've all been in Yellowstone National Park, or most of us have. The animals there, they don't experience human predation. They're, they're totally naive to it, right? You can walk right up to them. Uh, and you could stick a spear in them if the Park Service <laughs> would permit it, right? Imagine people first showing up here 13,000 years ago. These animals have never experienced human predation. They would have been naive to human predation. Uh, and the same idea pertains. Would, would it have been easy, easy hunting? Would that have inspired people to essentially drive these animals 
um, to extinction. Another idea that we have is that climate change caused it. This was a period of dramatic climate change. We went from the last glaciation, when we had these huge, huge ice sheets covering North America, um, to interglacial climate, climate like today. So the, the Earth is warming dramatically. These glaciers are receding and melting back to the north and up mountain valleys. The sea level is rising. Plants and animals are, are migrating generally to the north, but in, in many different directions as we have this massive climatic and ecological shift. You can imagine climate change can cause animal extinctions because it's so ecologically disruptive. So this is another idea. A third idea that's been proposed is that it was um, disease that caused it. Humans brought with them um, diseases to which these animals had never experienced because humans were an old world species introduced into the new world. And perhaps through transmission of these diseases from themselves or possibly their domesticated dogs to these large mammals, uh, the mammals are driven to extinction. And most recently, the most recent idea proposed uh, is that uh, an extraterrestrial body, either an asteroid or a comet, struck the Earth perhaps in North American ice sheets, around 12,900, 13,000 years ago, and that this produced a massive shock wave, wave causing fires uh, and animal uh, extinctions as well. But research that you've done recently does not support that theory. That's right. Um, we spent the last 18 months, myself uh, and three students at the University of Wyoming, Eileen Hillman, Joe Gingrich, and Carolyn Ketchum, and a number of colleagues from elsewhere, uh, examining evidence for this comet impact um, from seven sites across North America. And in fact, we found zero evidence whatsoever that this event uh, actually happened. So at the moment, I have to be fairly skeptical uh, about the comet hypothesis, but uh, the remaining ideas I would, I would consider still in play, and to a lesser extent, the comet idea as well, because I don't think our, our work was necessarily the last word uh, on that idea. What does your gut tell you most likely happened? Um, my gut tells me that the most likely culprit is humans, um, for many reasons, but the simplest reason I can, I can put forward is that this extinction event that correlates with human arrival in the New World was not unique to North America. It also happened in South America around the same time. It happened in Australia 50,000 years ago when people first showed up. It happened in various island uh, chains like the Caribbean. 4,000 years ago, it happened in the Mediterranean islands, Sicily and Sardinia and Crete. 12,000 years ago, it happened in the islands of the Pacific. It happened in New Zealand with the moas, these large extinct birds, about 700 years ago. Everywhere people show up, we have this wave of large animal extinctions that follows. If we look at the New World, it seems like a really complex problem if we focus on that because there's so much going on at this time period. But if we look at the world as a whole, the New World seems to fit this pattern. People show up, animals go extinct. In that sense, I see humans, I, I, my hunch is that humans must have played an important role in this process. Dr. Todd Serville, thanks for letting us pick your brain today. Thanks for having me. This is a good time to check with your level of understanding this is the second video in which we learned about Clovis people as well as the extinction of the large animals they hunted for food. Now, do you think that the first video you saw helped you understand this one more? Well, there were no visual clues in the video we just saw, no immediate context, so you may have understood less. There's no right or wrong about it. We're just taking a quick assessment of listening comprehension. We'll learn a lot more about the unit theme of Native Americans in episode 82.